What is up guys? Welcome to another video about the Korg SV1 digital piano. Today we'll be taking a look at the connection capabilities between the SV1 and the computer along with functionality that it can and cannot do. The SV1 has multiple connections on the rear panel including XLR, quarter inch audio, pedal inputs, your standard MIDI in and out, and then it has right over here on the very right hand side for me, left hand side for you guys, is the USB connector. You use a generic USB cable with a USB type B on one end, that's what plugs into the SV1, and a type A that plugs into the computer. Type A is just your standard plug that goes into just your laptop or your computer, and the type B connector is that square USB connector that is what the connector on the back of the SV1 has. So we go ahead, plug that in. I've already done that here. What you're gonna wanna do is make sure your Korg is off, plug those cables in, the type B into the keyboard, type A into your computer. You're gonna to wanna to download the drivers off of Korg's official website. Easiest way I've found to do this is just go to your favorite search engine, type in Korg SV1 driver, go to the official Korg website, and download the Mac or Windows driver depending on what you're using for your computer. If it doesn't recognize it when you turn the Korg on, restart your computer, restart the Korg, kind of refresh everything, and hopefully that will trigger and it'll recognize the keyboard on your computer. Once everything is connected and turned on, the first thing that we can do is use the Korg SV1 as a MIDI controller for virtual instruments or to record the MIDI data inside our DAW. If you aren't sure what the difference is between audio and MIDI, check out the link in the description below. I recently did a video on that describing the differences to hopefully give you a little bit more knowledge around what you can do with audio and what you can do with MIDI. In short though, MIDI is just the data from the SV1 going to the computer. It's not the actual sound from the keyboard. So I've already gone and plugged my Korg into the computer. I've downloaded the Korg driver and everything is synced up, ready to go. As you can see here, I have my DAW open, and in track one, I'm actually recording the audio through an external mic for this video. But in track two, you see that I have SV1 keyboard. Depending on the software you use, this might look a little different. You should be able to select the SV1 as the MIDI input in your settings. Once you've done that, you can find a track and select the SV1 keyboard as the MIDI input for that track. As you can see here, if I open up, I have my MIDI section here and I have the SV1 keyboard selected. And if you also notice, I have this keyboard down along here. If I play the keys on the keyboard, you can see that the keys light up and I also have this green indicator bar right here that shows me that I am getting data through. If I had virtual instruments, I could drag that in here and this would control the sounds that are on the computer. So that's completely set up to use the SV1 as a controller, pretty easy. All you need is a generic USB cable and a DAW and probably some virtual instruments unless you wanna use just the standard MIDI sounds. The second way that we can use the USB connection on the keyboard is to update the keyboard, add new sound packs, or interface with the Korg SV1 sound editor that you can download for free on your computer from Korg. Again, make sure you have the drivers installed on your computer, the same ones we used to use the keyboard as a MIDI controller. And then you wanna also go and download the SV1 sound editor from Korg. Again, do a quick search in your favorite search engine for Korg SV1 sound editor. One of the top results should be a link to download that for Windows or Mac, whatever you're using. Once installed, make sure the SV1 is connected to your computer, turned on, and open up the Korg SV1 sound editor. It might take a few minutes to open. It's got to connect with the SV1. It's got to load in the presets that you have on the SV1. And once it opens up, it'll open to the main tab if it's successfully connected to the SV1. You'll notice here that we have all of the controls that we have physically on the keyboard in the software interface, and it allows us to control every one of these from the software interface. We can even back up presets, make modifications, save them to current presets, and do some nice additional functionality that you don't necessarily have easily from the front end of the keyboard. Korg did it right when they did the 360 knobs on the keyboard, so if you have the keyboard, um, you'll know what I'm talking about, but if you don't, the knobs don't have a stopping point 
on either end. They're 360 knobs, you can just turn them round and round and round. As I change the controls on the keyboard, they're also changing in the software interface. What Chord did is they gave these little lighting indicators on the keyboard to show what value the knob is set at. So when you change it in the software interface, it just updates the light rather than actually needing motorized knobs on the keyboard. I'm working on a more in-depth video of the Cork SV1 sound editor, so be on the lookout for that. To wrap up our discussion about the Cork SV1 and the USB capabilities, you have one, the ability to use the SV1 as a MIDI controller for your keyboard, and two, the ability to connect it, to update the keyboard, to bring new patches in or to interface with the Korg SV1 sound editor. Unfortunately, the SV1 does not have the capability to transfer the sound from the keyboard through the USB cable to your DAW. This is typical of a lot of digital pianos out there, though there are a couple that actually have audio interfaces built in and have the ability to transfer their sounds or the sounds that you're playing to the computer. In order to do this with the SV1, you'll need some sort of audio interface to connect the audio outs of the keyboard to the interface, and then the interface will bring that sound to the computer. I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. I will answer them to the best of my ability. And as always, subscribe, smash that thumbs up button. Thanks for watching, you guys are awesome. I'll talk to you later.